Somewhere between the edge of being alive and feeling dead Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at uh, a product called Frigate. But before we get into that product, it's a uh, security camera AI based uh, open source project. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, cameras, security cameras. Um, I've got three sets of security cameras that I've collected over the years. You can see over here, this is a uh, Nest Cam, uh, have really old ones from like, I don't know, six years ago or longer. And, uh, you know, these are subscription based cameras. Once you turn off the subscription, you know, they almost become useless, uh, except for there is a few open source options that you can uh, use to kind of use these cameras for something anyway. And that's a problem with some of these uh, cloud-based products that you buy. Company goes out of business or you, you, know, you kind of get sick of subscribing these monthly fees and uh, they become a useless brick. Anyways, this is the Nest Cam. Uh, I've got the second set of security cameras are these kind of cheap Chinese Yi outdoor security cameras. They're pretty good quality. They're actually better quality than the Nest Cam and they were quite cheaper. Um, and then I got these uh, Lorex uh, 180 degree dual lens 4K cameras from Costco. You get a set of them for a pretty good price. Very impressed with them, even the, the software they come from. And actually these cameras were rated uh, pretty highly on, I think it was security.org, uh, some security website that takes a look at how the cameras implement security in their software, is it encrypted, all that kind of thing. So anyways, got these, very impressed with them. In the end, I've got these three sets of security cameras and I said to myself, what can I do with these? Uh, I don't like having like three different uh, pieces of software to control these cameras. I wanna see them all in one view, etc., etc." So anyways, uh, coming over here, we can see I've got Home Assistant installed and uh, using Home Assistant, I was able to get all those cameras in one view. Uh, Pretty cool to do that. Even those Nest cams, there's a plugin that uh, actually makes those cameras from useless and, and throw them in the garbage to can actually use it for something. So uh, three different vendors all in one view, pretty cool. But this is like not exactly real time streaming. It's kind of like two frames a second or something like that. I'm sure I could probably figure a way to dial it up in the settings for Home Assistant, but Again, Home Assistant isn't really recording the data. It's I'm not getting those notifications about if it detects movement and animals and stuff. It's just kind of showing this live stream, which is a great step. But uh, I thought, you know, how, how did I get all these into one view? Well, let's take a look at each of those cameras. So uh, looking around the open source community, uh, this uh, project here called Yeehack V5 uh, somebody went ahead and added a project for those Yi Chinese cameras that you could turn them into an RTSP. I think it's R, is it RSTP or RTSP server uh, streaming protocol for any application that supports streaming. So uh, I was able to do that for these Yi cameras. Um, and you can see here after putting the new firmware on those cameras, really easy process to do. It comes up on a web server and I can look at all the stats and do all kinds of uh, stuff with those cameras. So great, able to do more with that. Interestingly enough, Lorex, which is those cameras from, uh, even these Lorex cameras that you buy from Costco, interestingly enough, they support RTSP protocol. And uh, all the details here on their support page, uh, what kind of URL, how you put the user password in there, username at password and then this is the URL. Great that they support this out of the box. I don't even need to change the firmware. So uh, all in all able to get at least uh, some of these cameras into one view. Anyways, uh, the whole goal of what I've been trying to do here is what open source project can I use to uh, record the streamed security footage and give me notifications. Uh, an easy way to look back enter frigate and how did i hear about frigate well uh 
because I have TrueNAS uh, Scale installed, it's a new app that they support. So I get to install the Docker app in my network attached storage uh, unit and I checked it out. So Frigate's a fabulous product. You can see here it says monitor your security cameras with locally processed AI. And I was kind of skeptical when I first looked at this, but uh, actually it does a fabulous job. So and get the uh, info on this. So you can see here uh, Frigate I've installed up here and uh, we are going to just take a look at some of the settings in here. So a couple things to note. Um, so the, again, this is a Docker image that I've installed. Um, it's really important if you, uh, this, this application is very CPU intensive because it does all this AI analysis on the images to figure out if something's moved, if it's a person, if it's an animal, all that kind of thing. So I have actually installed as per their recommendation, we'll see here in a bit, I'll show you on their Frigate page, uh, this, uh, it's called Coral TPU. It's an AI USB stick that does offloads all the AI processing onto this stick, plugged it into my TrueNAS Mini, um, and it's working fabulous. But in order for that USB add-on to work, you have to click this mount USB bus checkbox in the frigate configuration in TrueNAS and uh, that uh, turns it on. Otherwise, it's your typical stuff. You know, these are all different ports to log into the UI or enable RTSP. Yeah, so, you know, I mapped all the ports so I'm not overlapping with something else uh, in, on my TrueNAS scale system and we'll take a look at that. I believe I log into one of these ports and uh, Let's uh, take a look, but before I dive into that, uh, I have other videos talking about IX volume versus host path. I just left the defaults on this because I was just kind of exploring the app, and the defaults are to use IX volume. An interesting thing is I'll show you where all the files are stored for IX volume for any Docker images, uh, and uh, I can show you where all the configuration is stored. So you can copy it out. And put it somewhere and you could probably recreate this whole docker image uh, using host path and just point it to the area that you copy it and then you won't lose your configuration etc anyways we'll get into that in a bit so that's the basic configuration uh, to get the image up and running and then you open the user interface and add your uh, cameras and all that through different configuration so let's go back here and if i select that row for frigate over here on the side, you're going to see the more the ports that are mapped. So these are the ports in the Docker image. These are the ports they're mapped to in TrueNAS. Uh, and beyond that, something that's quite useful for all of your Docker images in TrueNAS, there is this area where you can click here called Mount Volumes. And so you can see here, uh, this path is where all the configuration is stored for Frigate. And that's all handled by TrueNAS. So they've mounted uh, the configuration to that location. And you can see this uh, slash MNT slash dot IX dash apps. That's kind of the lo default location where TrueNAS scale uh, in its current version, uh, Electric Eel, is storing um, all the IX volume based Docker image configuration. It's in there and you'll see like app mounts frigate and there'll be data mounts frigate all that kind of thing so just to point that out but if you want to see all the mount points that are there for any docker image in true nas scale you can just click on that icon that says uh, mounts but the the image has to be running and it'll show you uh, this folder in the docker image maps to this folder in true nas scale so anyway moving on Let's take a look at the user interface. All right, so here I am in the user interface. I go to the top main screen here, and you can see I've got a good four cameras working here. Now, so far I was not able to get my uh, Google Nest cams working. There's uh, the, the version of uh, Go to RTC, which is a plugin uh, that Frigate supports to hook up all kinds of different cameras. It has an old version in Frigate, which I believe there's some bugs that the Google Nest Cam is not working currently. So maybe in a future, in the when I upgrade to a newer version, I can try that out. But 
I have my two Yeecam and my two Lorex cameras, all using RTSP streaming here, and these are live. So pretty cool. Up here you can see uh, Frigate has shown some events. So I recently went out to get my uh, recycling bins and kind of shows a fast clip of uh, the motion and you can just click on that picture and see what that motion was, which is pretty cool. What I really like about this is it shows synchronized all the cameras down here with that motion event. So as this is playing, I can take a look at any of the, the other cameras and they're all synced together at the same point in time. So if an object moves from one camera to the other to the other, you get the timeline that shows them all together. So really useful that way. Um, and you can set up groups of cameras. So for example, I have front, uh, front yard cameras here and back cameras here, etc. And just a really useful tool. The other thing is uh, I can click on this review tab over here and this shows all the motion events uh, that have been recently captured and a timeline is right up here. So I can just like drag, once I pick one of them, I can drag the timeline and see like, and there's like little red things here showing motion events in the timeline as I scroll up and down, right? So over here, I can see there was some motion. Uh, it's probably when I put the bins out this morning, but very useful to see all of this motion events uh, in one spot. Uh, the other thing is, so that's alerts. I can go to the sort of regular timeline and uh, with all the cameras synchronized, I'm just dragging here on the right hand side and it's showing, you know, any sort of motion that's happened here. So you can see there's somebody putting stuff out. Preview not found. Sounds like the software is a little bit buggy. Let's try this again. Configuration is down here at the settings tab and uh, I'm not going to open the settings or configuration editor. All the documentation is there. Uh, how to set up the cameras, whether you want them to do motion detection or not. Uh, it takes quite a bit of CPU from your uh, device and for me I'm running TrueNAS uh, scale on a, a mini device. Um, it took like 50% or more of the CPU when I had motion turned on. So then when I installed the uh, Coral uh, USB stick, it offloaded quite a bit. So now I'm able to have it running without impacting my NAS too much. Uh, and that's under the configuration editor. And uh, let's just take a look at some more of this. So here's like uh, the system metrics tab view, kind of shows how much of the CPU is being used. You can see there, I have that Coral USB stick and it shows it's uh, processing of AI material also shows Coral's memory usage and uh, there's other views in here showing cameras and how much they're doing pretty pretty cool here under storage uh, recordings and how much space they're taking I think I set mine to a certain number of days that satisfies me so all the cameras it just records the streaming for a certain amount of time and loops over it plus it has the motion events and all that um, bunch of info there about the, the storage and we can look at the camera information all kinds of stats about each camera is how much CPU they're taking uh, motion events frames frame detections etc etc really cool app here um, and uh, in the end it was just the perfect solution to tie in all of the cameras that I had uh, which they kind of had no home well this is kind of one software package uh, where I could view all the cameras in one view. I could uh, configure how I want them, record the streaming data for however long I want. Motion events are there. Super useful way to kind of recover the uh, usefulness of those cameras and just have, again, one place to view it. So really uh, thought that was pretty cool. All right, so here you can see on the Frigate documentation page, I go use of Google Coral Accelerator is optional, but strongly recommended. CPU detection should only be used for testing purposes. The Coral will outperform even the best CPUs and can process 100 plus frames per second with very little overhead. So that's basically what I ended up getting 
uh, I think from Amazon or something like that. Um, so yeah, if you're going to use Frigate, probably a good idea to get the Google Coral Accelerator USB stick. Um, beyond that, you can see here in the configuration of Frigate, this is, you add this configuration to the file to tell it to use that Coral uh, stick in order to do the AI detection. It offloads uh, quite a bit of the processing off of your CPU. And beyond that, I think that's pretty much uh, most of the information I want to cover today. Pretty cool uh, little app to use. Uh, great that it's on my network attached storage because I have kind of terabytes of space on there anyway. So kind of the perfect place for those cameras to record their information. And the app seemed very useful. So sort of my first spin at it. Thought I would share that with you. Uh, in an upcoming video, I'll be looking at expanding the... Uh, RAID Z disk space on my network attached storage. I bought another 10 terabyte drive and uh, now that TrueNAS Electric Eel supports uh, doing that, um, I'm going to be doing that next, but I have to wait for an updated version of TrueNAS Scale because there's a defect in TrueNAS that affects me. If I go over here to storage, lo and behold, I get this error and I'm not able to go into the manage devices and uh, expand this and then usually you can just go here and go extend uh, ZFS but doesn't show any drives here because of that error when I first go into storage where it doesn't properly uh, build the list of drives that are there. Anyways, uh, hopefully in the next uh, release of Electric Eel. I'll be able to do that and I'll catch you in the next video.